Hi everybody, this is Sean Overton with OneStepRemove.com. In this video we're discussing triangular arbitrage, and I've been holding off on this subject for quite a while because it's really complicated to explain, and I know I'm going to struggle to fit it in, in a five minute video. If you don't understand the concept of a synthetic currency, then you definitely need to watch the video on synthetic currency pairs. It's not going to make any sense if you don't understand that concept. The idea is that you take a normal currency and then you compare it to its synthetic currency pair, and you look for differences in the price. So if you can buy product A for 100, and then you knew that you could go sell product A in the same place for 102, of course you would do it because you would make an instant profit. That's the idea behind triangular arbitrage, is that you put a named currency pair with a synthetic currency pair, and you actually have the ab ability, rather frequently, to buy and sell the exact same thing at different prices instantaneously, and you can wait risk-free for them to come back in line and sell it at a profit. Now the risks of this are not conceptual. The, the concept, unlike most of the strategy ideas I come across, is absolutely sound. There's zero doubt about whether it works if it executes properly. The big contingency is the if. Now when you're executing a trade that has three legs and it's very sensitive on the timing because a lot of these opportunities are fleeting, you need to execute it immediately. And if anything goes wrong at the execution, then of course the strategy loses money. So the real challenge is not whether triangular arbitrage works, but rather selecting an appropriate brokerage and platform to make sure that you're able to take advantage of the opportunities, which segues into my next point. Most brokerages, and by most I mean 99% of them, do not want this business because somebody has to lose and they are not interested in having somebody lose because of arbitrage. They want you to lose because you're trading and taking risk, not trying to milk them from some sort of technology latency or some hiccup with their own spread markup. And what I mean by that is most brokerages are wholesalers. There are really only 10 or 15 major banks in the world that handle the vast majority of Forex trading. They provide liquidity to the retail Forex brokers and then the retail Forex brokers just take a spread and they pass your trades onto the banks. If you're arbitraging them, you're arbitraging the banks, which means you're taking advantage of their wholesaler. If the retail broker has to decide between severing one insignificant customer or keeping their bank and their wholesaler happy, they're going to choose a wholesaler over you. So the, the real risk of triangular arbitrage is making sure that you do it in a way where you're not going to get caught. There's nothing immoral or wrong with it. Arbitrage has a very legitimate function in the market, but you have to remember that you're working against the incentive of the person that you're trading with, so you want to make sure that they don't have a way to track down what you're doing. There are a couple ways to handle it. One is that you trade very slowly, but to, if you start making a substantial amount of money, they're going to catch on and they're going to see it because all of your trading is happening with one account. The best way to go about it is to split your trading across at least two different brokers. So you see broker A has a price of this and broker B has a price of this and then you execute the real trade, they're the named currency pair at broker A and then you do the synthetic currency pair at broker B and then neither broker A nor broker B has any idea who's on the other side of this trade. It covers your tracks and it makes it a lot more likely to succeed in the long run. If you are dealing with a dealing desk, uh, more than likely their loss is your gain, but they, won't, they don't know about it, so they can't really do anything about it. And you want to make sure to give yourself the best chance of success. Most of your relationships are going to be between some low-cost ECN broker that passes through your liquidity, so you get the narrowest spreads possible. And then you're probably going to be trading on some marked up dealing desk that is either price shading or they're scaling up the spread and they've marked up the wrong side relative to the trade you wish to take. Whenever they change their markup is the reason that that opportunity exists. Uh, I know you'll have a lot of questions about triangular arbitrage and the theory behind it. You can read more on the blog post, which is linked from this video. And if you have any questions on trading in general, you can find me at www.onestepremove.com. My name is Sean Overton. Thank you for listening.